Hello students, welcome to Education Live channel. Well friends, today we will talk about metals and non-metals. It is a science chapter from class 8 NCRT syllabus. So before I start the discussion, I will like to give you a brief introduction. So first of all, we'll understand what is material. So material is a matter from a thing can be made. Now you will ask me what is matter? So matter is something that occupies space and has mass. Matter can be categorized into elements, compounds and mixtures. These elements can further be categorized into metals, non-metals and metalloids. Now there are 118 elements in which 92 are natural elements and 92 elements 70 are metals and 22 are non-metals. Now how do we distinguish between metals and non-metals? So what we do is we compare their physical properties and we compare their chemical properties. So by comparing the physical and the chemical properties of metals and non-metals, we can distinguish them. Now coming to physical properties of metals. They are malleable, they have luster, they are ductile, they are hard but not brittle, they have high thermal conductivity, they have high electrical conductivity, they are sonorous in nature. Now we will understand each of these properties separately in the coming slide. Coming to malleability, malleability is the quality of substance that can be shaped into something else without breaking. Like there are examples that metals can be beaten into sheets, you know there are steel sheets, you know there are aluminium sheets. So these are all examples of malleability. Understand what is ductility. So ductility is the ability of a metal to be drawn into wires. Or ductility is also the ability of a material to deform under tensile strength. It is a measure of how much strain a metal can take before breaking. Luster. The luster is the state or quality of shining. So when the light falls on the metals, the metal tends to shine. Like you know the uh, gold. Gold is a very lustrous metal so it shines a lot. Silver is also very lustrous metal, it shines a lot. Now coming to what is sonorous means, sonorous means we are capable of producing a deep sound. So uh, you know when we, you hit one metal with another metal it, it produces sound. Now you can take example of when you enter into the temple, there is a bell hanging outside when you hit the bell. You know, there is a deep sound which comes in so it is basically it uh, it is example of being sonorous in nature thermal conductor thermal conductor means that it is capable of conducting heat now electrical conductor the name itself suggests that it is capable of conducting electricity brittle means that uh, it can break easily though being hard the substance can break easily. The properties of metals and non-metals. So if you see uh, metals are malleable, however non-metals are not malleable. Metals are ductile, non-metals are not ductile. Metals have luster, non-metals don't have luster. Metals are not brittle, means not broken, cannot be broken easily. But non-metals are brittle and can be broken easily. Metals have very good conducted conductivity of heat and electricity. However, non-metals don't are not good conductors of heat and electricity. 
in both there are exceptions like lead is not a very good conductor of heat and electricity in case of metals and graphite is the exception in the non metals now metals are sonorous non metals are not non sonorous metals have high melting and boiling points however non metals have low mel melting and boiling points metals are generally heavy in nature there are exceptions like sodium potassium and magnesium are not that heavy in nature however non metals are generally light in nature we will understand the chemical properties of metals and non metals so we will understand the how metals and non metals behave when they react with oxygen so when metals react with oxygen they form metal oxides and these oxides are basic in nature now let us take a example when two molecules of magnesium reacts with oxygen it produces two molecules of magnesium oxide now these metal oxides when react with water they provide bases now let's take the same example when magnesium oxide reacts with water it gives magnesium hydroxide so this is basically basic in nature now coming to non metals non metals react with oxygen to form oxides which are acidic in nature so let us study example here also when sulfur reacts with oxygen it forms sulfur dioxide but when this non metals oxide uh, reacts with water they form acids so let us take example of that when sulfur oxide reacts with water it forms H2SO3 which is acidic in nature now coming to, now we will understand that how metals and non metals behave when they react with water but before we study that we will study the activity series of metals now there are certain metals which are highly reactive in nature then there are certain metals which are less reactive in nature and then there are certain metals which are least reactive in nature so let us study about this activity series so if we see potassium sodium and calcium are highly reactive in uh, with water and they react even with cold water and that reaction is highly exothermic in nature and uh, if you see magnesium aluminum zinc iron lead and hydrogen they react with only boiling water or steam and the reaction reaction is much le less vigorous however if you see copper mercury silver and gold they don't react with water at all so they are least reactive in nature now, uh, now having studied this activity series we will understand how metals and non metals behave when they react with water metals as we have already started react with cold water to form hydroxide and hydrogen gas we can take example of sodium when sodium reacts with one one molecule of sodium reacts with two molecules of water it gives two molecules of naoh plus hydrogen plus it releases heat now some metals react with boiling water or steam to form metallic oxide and hydrogen gas we can take example of that also like three molecules of iron reacts with four molecules of water and it basically gives fe3o4 plus four molecules of hydrogen now uh, let us understand how non metals behave with when they react with water so actually non metals don't react with water there is uh, there's no uh, change in the behavior of the non metals now let us understand that when metals and non metals uh, react with acids how they behave so when metals react with acids they form hydrogen gas and on the other side when non metals they don't react with acids now let's take example of a metal reacting with acid so like let's take example of zinc when one molecule of zinc reacts with two molecule of hcl it gives zncl2 plus hydrogen gas 
so the proof of hydrogen gas you know when you you when you bring a burning matchstick near the setup where you are where this reaction is happening you will see here a pop sound so this pop sound will indicate that the, that hydrogen is getting burnt now in this slide we'll understand that how metals and non metals behave when they react with bases so metal react with uh, sodium hydroxide to form hydrogen so we can take a example like two molecules of aluminum plus two molecules of NaOH gives plus two molecules of H2O gives us two molecules of NaAlO2 plus hydrogen gas so again here we can check when we bring a mur uh, burning matchstick near the setup we'll hear a pop sound which will indicate that hydrogen is getting burnt now non metals don't react with bases and even if they react the reaction is very complex so we'll not study anything about non metals reacting with bases at this juncture now talking about displacement reaction now generally if you see uh, you know a more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal however in case of non metals they don't displace they are not able to displace any metals so let us take a example like zinc which is a more reactive metal and when zinc reacts with cuso4 it gives us znso4 plus cu similarly the, the, you can see the other examples so now we'll understand what are the uses of metals and non metals so first we'll study the uses of metals a metal metals are used for creating technology metals are used in making skeleton of buildings skyscrapers houses etc metals are used in making utensils machinery and so many other things metals are also used for making chemicals now let us understand some of the uses of non metals non metals are used for making chemicals the air that we breathe in is also a non metal everyday items are also sometimes made of non metals non metals are used in making machinery also non metals are used in antiseptics they are used in making crackers even non metals are used in mixtures and of and for making gunpowder dear students with this the chapter comes to the end right so in this chapter we'll quickly summarize what you have started is the physical properties of metals and non metals chemical properties of non metals and non metals and the uses of metals and non metals hope you would have liked this video if you have liked this video do hit the like button and also subscribe this channel so that you get you know updates of the new videos that we'll be uploading you can also share this video with your friends on social media platforms and we wish you all the best for your exams and for your future thank you bye bye take care